Hello there. There are over a billion anorexia recovery videos available on YouTube. So why would you watch me? Because I am so over oatmeal. Like, subscribe, watch the following. Peace. Hello there, my name is Billy Juliana. I'm 49 years old and I have a 40 year history of dealing with anorexia nervosa. And currently I'm following the recovery methods espoused by Tabitha Farrar, Kayla Rose Kotecki, and Elisa Orris. And as is customary for my videos, I'm going to remove my glasses because I know the glare is distracting. And also while I am under a covered porch, I'm also outside, which means that I have all the sound effects you can imagine in my audio circumference. Just enjoy. And oatmeal jokes aside, I wanted to jump into today's topic, which is judging other people's weight gain. This is an unseemly topic because it reveals something about me that is quite unfair, and that is that I am fattest at heart. Now, that's an ugly word too, but I wanted to bring it up because I want to expose all the stumbling blocks in anorexia recovery and either try to eradicate them or work on rewiring them. And I'm sure that if I have some of these stumbling blocks, you can probably relate to some of them as well. And we can work on this stuff together. So let me just give an example. There's somebody who is famous on YouTube who has just recently undergone a total rethinking of her fitness and body and all of this kind of stuff and she's put on a lot of weight and i have cheered her on through this journey i've been so for this because it has kind of blown up the whole diet industry and fitness industry ideas and stuff like that so i've really really been enjoying watching this journey except i've had this visceral reaction to her weight gain she went all in and was eating to satisfy her extreme hunger and her mental and physical hunger cues and she gained weight which is natural of course but i had this visceral reaction that was against my best intentions that was unwitting but i was just like "Ooh, she looks a little puffy and then my anorexic brain took that and it was like mm-hmm so if you're thinking that about her what will others think about you? You better stop eating as much as you eat. You better watch your weight. You better not let yourself get to X, Y, Z weight. You know what I'm saying? This is so ugly. This is just unacceptable. And I know that my coach, if she ever saw this video, would probably want to kick me in the rear. And I deserve it because this is something that I should have rewired a long time ago. Weight and body size should not matter. However, if I just have this automatic reaction, it's just there, right? So what do I do with this? Like with everything, I pretend that it's not there and I take action against it so i just go ahead and keep eating and i don't let any of this stuff derail me i don't let disappointment in how somebody looks on youtube stop me from going where i need to go and the other thing i want to bring up is i used to think that i had a liberal mindset when it comes to body size in general in treatment over the years i would be in group therapy with other people and there may have been people in group with me who were in larger body sizes and they would ask me really sad questions a question like i really scare you don't i and i would be I would be so upset because that was not <laughs> on my mind at all. No, I, I wasn't even thinking about their body size. And I, you know, brought this up to my coach, you know, saying, you know, I really don't judge people based on their body, body size, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay for them to be that size, but it's not okay for you, right? <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah. And she says, you've got fattest in you. <laughs> you've got fattest beliefs. I'm two years into my recovery path and 
I haven't rewired these thoughts yet, these beliefs and these judgments about other people's weight gain. And that means probably I haven't completely rewired my own set of beliefs about my own body. So with that, what I need to do is act like it's not there. Of course, the stuff is going to come up just like fear and everything else. Anorexia will just throw everything at you to keep you safe from whatever it is that it feels like is threatening you. And it's doing that with me. And so, of course, it's going to use this as good fodder to keep me stuck or actually even just slide backwards. And so I have to be aware that it's there, that yes, it is coming up, but then pretend that it's not. Take the opposite action to what the feeling is telling me to do. The feeling is going into my anorexic circuitry and saying, okay, I'm not going to eat that extra donut or I'm not going to eat that pizza or I'm not going to eat those indulgent foods. I'm not going to eat through my fullness. I'm going to just stay here, frozen. And then what happens is I ha run the risk of sliding backwards. I don't get free out of the prison of anorexia. And the 40-year process just continues into 50 years and beyond. And so I don't want that. I want to just keep going and if I've got to rewire my ideas about my own body size and I've got to rewire my ideas about other people's weight as well this is all part of the same system so I know this topic is just a little bit slightly off the beaten path in terms of propriety but it is something that I think needs to be exposed because it's there and it needs to be worked on and yes it is a form of prejudice so it needs to be eradicated and so i just wanted to bring it up and i hope that you can relate if you can't i understand leave it in the comments your feelings on this topic and until next time everybody take care it's time for me to go eat i'm hungry and i need to go take some action against what i just talked about so with that Okay, so I went and got something to eat. Yes, indeed, I got myself a Boston cream donut. This is one of my favorite things in the world. As you know, I love donuts. So anyway, I thought that since I was already being rather inappropriate, I would be even more inappropriate. Not by eating a donut. This is the best thing that I could do for myself all day. No, I thought I'd just go ahead and tell a family joke. So if you've ever heard of the game Punderdome, it's basically a game that you play where you draw cards and the cards have two categories on them, two topics, and then you have 60 seconds to make a pun based on those two topics, putting those two topics together. So for example, we had one set of cards that said the Beatles and drinking. And so my family and I were playing this and we came up with things like the fab poor or, um, oh, I don't know what else we came up with. I'm not fast enough to think. I came up with the fab poor. Anyway, so my parents were acting as the judges in this particular Punderdome match and my sister and brother-in-law and my niece and I were all playing and of course anorexics are competitive so I'm super competitive in this particular game and I really wanted to nail this one. The two categories were procrastination and computers have you thought of a pun yet by the way here's some cream there's more inside here's the sound effects I was looking for Okay, procrastination and computers.
So I thought that I had everyone beat with what I came up with. But my brother-in-law went first. And he came up with Microsoft Put Office, which I thought was pretty darn good. And so I thought, oh no, that's gonna be tough to beat. But I had come up with calculators. I thought it was so clever. <laughs> My sister, who was already losing at this point and not really into it, well, she quietly said her answer, and she went last, I B M. Okay, you didn't need to hear any of that. I'm banned from YouTube. Sorry. Take care, everyone. Bye.